I had a lot of media to do Monday and Tuesday and then um, some stuff to do for sponsors on Wednesday. And then Thursday, uh, we were go-kart testing and Friday we were go-kart practicing and we raced Saturday and then we got on an airplane after uh, Alex go-kart raced and went down to uh, the Key West and went on vacation down there and did a bunch of fishing and lobster diving and had a really, really fun, fun time down there. And I left straight from Key West and got Janice and the kids home uh, back to Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and then uh, got uh, went up to Wisconsin last night and, and uh, ran a ARCA Midwest Tour late model race um, at in Kakana, Wisconsin, and uh, had some fun doing that, going back to my roots and doing some short track racing. And um, I got, got to the hotel last night about midnight and got up at 4.30 this morning to go catch a 6:30 flight uh, back to back to Charlotte, and I've been going hard since since I hit the ground here in Charlotte. Well, thank you for that recap. It sounds like uh, I don't know if we could classify that as a true break or not. It sounds like you guys were were pretty busy during that stretch. So we'll go now to questions, and to kick us off, we're going to start with Claire B. Lane. Go ahead, Claire. Thank you. I want to start with your thoughts about Watkins Glen and average finish there. It, it's so much better now that you have had a win and you can kind of lay back on that uh, for playoff opportunities. But average finish 22.89, I think, at the Glen. How do you look at the Glen? How do you look at how aggressive you be or what you're able to do now, given your, your status, uh, having had a win? Yeah, well... It's not a secret that road racing has never been um, something that I've excelled at. I've, I've worked really hard at getting better at it, and I feel like I have um, gotten a lot better at it. But, um, you know, Watkins Glen has is, is been a racetrack that I enjoy going to. It is a fun racetrack to run at. Um, I enjoy making laps around there and, and racing there. I've qualified really well the last few years there. Uh, qualified in the top 10 actually the last few years there and have just not been able to put the results together and and, and get good finishes um, got wrecked uh, one time uh, had uh, transmission issues one time so yeah we've, we've had a lot of different things um, kind of creep up and 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 hurt our result but I feel like Watkins Glen is a place I can go and run in the top 10, but I've, I've never felt like I was a threat to win there. So um, not sure, you know, going there, I still don't feel like we'll be a threat to win, but it's, it's a place that I feel comfortable and, and feel like that uh, if we got some track position and got off strategy on pit stop, pit sequence, or, or, you know, stretch our fuel mileage or something like that, it, it's certainly a possibility for us to go there and steal a win. Um, and, you know, that would be that would be awesome. Also, David Smith from Motorsports Analytics had something really interesting to say about you. He wrote that restart specialist is not a term anyone would have used when discussing Amarola a year ago, but his position retention rate within the top 14 increased by 8.75 percentage points on preferred groove restarts and nearly 18 points on non-preferred groove restarts. 90 percentage rate from the preferred groove ranks first among all drivers, a marked improvement that should carry well into the next gen area era if it sustains into the next gen era if it sustains wow i read that and i thought wow your restarts are just getting better have you worked really hard on that yeah i mean that's that's really what uh has has changed a lot of things about our sport is the restarts um you, you've seen it as as you cover uh the sport the restarts have gotten wild and crazy and, and it's everything i mean you can you can gain five or six spots in the first two laps of a restart now um, and, and you can lose five or six spots. And even if you're better than those cars in, in two laps, if you give up six spots, it will take you 50 laps to get those six spots back. So it is really important to, uh, to get good restarts. And that's something, um, you know, I, I've certainly worked hard at and been mindful of, of getting better, um, at restarts and, and maintaining position or advancing positions. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've been able to do that this year. So, um, even though the year is, has been a struggle at some of the racetracks we've gone to, 
there has been some things to take away that have been marked improvements. Well, I'm glad you had fun racing in my home state of Wisconsin, and uh, you have good luck at Watkins Glen, okay? Yeah, thank you. We got uh, got go bowling on the car, and it's the go bowling race at the Glen, so um, should be a fun weekend. Thank you, man. Thanks. All right, we'll continue with questions. Our next question will come from John Newby. Go ahead, John. Thank you. So when you have a two-week break like this, is it a, just a little bit of a refresher for you? And then how do you get back into that competitive mindset? Is it the go-kart racing? Is it heading up to Wisconsin? What's your best method? Yeah, I mean, I, I took a week to vacation, really, out of the two weeks that we've had off. Um, but the rest of the time has been spent, uh, you know, racing. I was, I was racing uh, with my son, Alex, and then I was racing a late model last night in Wisconsin. So it's who I am. It's what I do. And, um, I enjoy time away. I, I certainly enjoy, uh, you know, clearing my head and, and getting to spend some quality family time, but at the same time, going to the racetrack is normal. And I really enjoy normal in the routine of, uh, you know, go, going to the racetrack each and every weekend and going to compete. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Our next question will come from Alex Andrea. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, Eric, um, I, I know you mentioned you kind of feel like you, you know, stole a win at Loudon. Ryan Blaney said yesterday, though, that he felt like um, that race was particularly strong for Fords and kind of the start of maybe building momentum in the Ford camp. And with so many 750 tracks being in the playoff schedule, I'm curious if you feel similarly like this is kind of a turning point or was that sort of a surprise, you know, one off race? No, I do. I feel like um, we're getting better. I feel like we're starting to turn the corner. I, I do think that um, we've made significant improvements with our cars, specifically with the 750 package. Um, you know, Nashville was really the one that stood out to me as kind of the turning point for us. Uh, we went there and qualified on the pole, ran in the top five the majority of the race, and I think we finished fourth. So, uh, had a had a good run there and and really started to see light at the end of the tunnel. Started to see like, hey, we're 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 making some positive improvements here on the race cars, and we're getting things going in the right direction. You know, motor wise, car build wise, just all these things. So we went to Loudon, and yeah, it was a it was a great race for Fords all around. The Penske cars were fast. Um, you know, the Stuart Haas cars were fast. So. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was a great race for us, obviously, um, to be able to go up there and compete and uh, pass a lot of race cars. We started deep in the field, so to pass a lot of race cars, have a great day on pit road, do all the things we needed to do to execute a perfect race to win, and really, in, in a clutch situation where we had to win. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Trey Down. Go ahead, Trey. Hey, Eric, uh, this week you guys are at the Glen, but next week you'll head to uh, the Indianapolis road course for the first time. Just want to get your take on the schedule switch moving from the oval to the road course and uh, what you expect from the track and how you're preparing. Uh, if I'm being honest, I'm sad about it, to be, to be just honest. <laughs> I, I think uh, racing on the oval was so cool just because, um, you know, I was a kid and, and – went and watched an Indy 500, um, back in the late nineties. So it was, uh, it was a special place and to, to race on the, uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, bless you. Sorry. Um, to race on the oval, uh, was just special. I mean, you, you, you think about the history of that racetrack and the people that have ran around that, you know, rectangular, you know, racetrack and cross that yard of bricks and all those things and all the races that went on before you dating back to the early 1900s is just a very special place. And, and so to not race on the oval is, is weird. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll certainly miss it. Uh, but I have no doubt that we will put on an exciting race on the road course and it will, um, it will be a lot of fun to, you know, try and figure that place out. Do you lean on uh, your teammate, Chase Briscoe, who raced so well there last year in the Xfinity Series as you're preparing? 
Absolutely. I, I will for sure, um, you know, lean on him and, and pick his brain. And, um, you know, he, he ran really well there, obviously won the race uh, in the Xfinity race last year. So I will, I will absolutely uh, lean on him. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Eric, um, certainly in, in this era now with uh, limited practice or no practice at, at, at tracks, uh, it's, it's changed how things have done, how teams prepare, maybe how you've prepared to some degree. I'm curious when everything reverts back to goes to next season with the, the new car and the expectation of having some practice, you know, maybe not like what it was in the past, but having some practice, does that, will that change? I mean, are there lessons or things that, that how you do things will still be able to carry over next year? Or is it a case that, you know, once it gets back to a practice that some of the things that you did to prepare now kind of get thrown out the window and don't mean as much? Um, yeah, I, I think, I think practice is, uh, going to be really important with the new car. I think there's so much to learn and I think it's going to be, it's going to be huge. Um, any track time that you do get and to maximize the track time that you get, um, there's going to be a lot to learn. Um, when you get started with an, with a new product, I mean, it's new from, from top to bottom, everything about it is, is new, the parts, the pieces, um, you know, the, even, even driving it like the, it's got a rack and pinion steering instead of power steering. It's got five gears instead of four gears. It's not an H pattern shifter. It's a sequential shifter. So all those things are very different. And so, um, getting on track, practicing, um, you know, going through a laundry list of, of ideas and, and setup changes and all of those things to try and hit on something because that out of the gate, somebody's going to hit on something and, and they will be the dominant team and then everybody else will play catch up. Um, so yeah, you, you want to be the team uh, that hits it first. Thank you. Okay. Our next question will come from Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Hey Eric. I'm curious. What, what did the win at New Hampshire do for the conversations with Stuart Haas racing in Smithfield about next year? Yeah, so that those those talks have been ongoing. Uh, that happens every year, you know, regardless. And and so obviously, um, winning makes things better. Always, it, it makes the morale, of the shop better, the team better, um, and, and it you know boosts uh, momentum going into the playoffs and, and all of those things. And so yeah, it, it certainly helps. But uh, we're we're going on ten years of uh, a wonderful relationship with them and. Uh, look forward to continuing that for many more years. So, um, yeah, winning always helps. Is it your expectation that you'll be back with Stuart Haas Racing next year? Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a multi-year contract uh, for a while now. So, yeah, we don't we don't disclose all the contract um, terms to, to all you guys because all you do is ask every year anyway. So, <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we're going to take our next question from John with AP. Go ahead, John. Eric, uh, your win last week, you became driver number 13. Did that put a little extra pressure on the four going forward? What's that? I didn't hear you. You said, yeah, you became the 13th driver, and now that's only three spots left. And uh, the four is one of the one of the guys in the running, but did that put a little more pressure on him and on the, on the organization or no? I have no idea. You, you would have to ask Kevin Harvick that question, not me. Um, I, I, I'm sure they have a lot of confidence that they will make it into the playoffs. They're a great race team. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll be fast at some of these races coming up. He's, uh, he's dominated Michigan the last several years. I'm sure they'll be fast at Daytona. So um, I have no doubt that uh, they're thinking about it. I, if I was in their situation, I would certainly at least be thinking about it or be aware, but I, I, I believe they have confidence in, in their team and, and, and certainly in our organization um, that they'll be able to get the job done and, and um, yeah, and go make the playoffs. All right, our next question from Nathan. Go ahead, Nathan. 
Uh, hey, Eric, uh, now that you now that you guys are locked into the playoffs, uh, are there certain things in particular that that your team are is, is looking at uh, improving on instead of just you know, over the last four races and going up to the playoffs instead of just, you know, everything as a whole? Yeah, I mean, we've been focusing on improving at a rapid pace uh, just to try and turn our season around. And I think we've done we've done that certainly in the last month to month and a half. So. I am uh, I'm looking forward to the playoffs. I, I feel like we are starting to peak um, at the right time, which is important uh, in sports in general. Uh, you, you know, I, I watched my Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, you know, peak at the right time and, 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 you know, go on to win a Super Bowl and win in as, uh, as the lowest seed there. So, yeah, I think it's uh, it's that's what it's really about and I feel like we're we're getting there we're we're getting our race cars better and better we're you know figuring out uh, some things about our race cars to to make them better and faster and um, that's what it's going to take you can't you can't take uh, slow race cars into the playoffs and go win a championship and, and I feel like we're doing a, a really good job of uh, getting the most out of our race cars now and we're continuing to build on that so looking forward to doing that, um, you know, to, to close out the regular season. And then as we go into the playoffs and as we go into the playoffs, it's really going to be about execution. Um, you, you can't have pit road speeding penalties. You can't have loose wheels. You can't have uh, slow pit stops. Uh, driver's got to do his job on, you know, restarts and, and getting the most out of the race car. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a total team effort and we gotta, we gotta execute on every facet of the race. Thanks. Yep. All right. Well, Eric, thank you so much for your time. I know you, you run to some other things. So thank you again for joining us and best of luck this week. Thanks, guys. Yeah.